The first ever series to analyze the unexplored aspects and issues of Carnatic music. Dear Rasikas, my greetings to all of you. I am Dr. Radha Baskar musician and musicologist and I'm here today to share with you many aspects about our beautiful Carnatic music. Way back in 2004, we started what was called the Music Appreciation Program, MAP, and in this, we shared with our Rasikas the beautiful aspects of our Carnatic music and many, many intricate aspects which they need to know in order to become better Rasikas of music. Here I would quickly like to add that everybody cannot learn music in order to appreciate it. So we had devised a program where Rasikas who were not initiated into music but love to listen to music could also be a part of this beautiful musical journey. Through Palam, I am going to have a series of programs called Insight where I will be sharing with you many many beautiful aspects about our Carnatic music system. As you know Carnatic music is one of the most phenomenal and most greatest systems of music in the world and if a Rasika is able to go deeper into it he'll be able to have a very very enchanting experience and be a part of this great journey. Insight <laughs> In this series titled Insight, I'll be sharing many aspects about our Carnatic music and also there are several issues related to Carnatic music, I mean beyond the purview of just technical or theoretical aspects and that will also be discussed here, something which was never done before by anybody. Before I move to the subject of Carnatic music, let us look at the vistas of music itself and uh, this is something very very enchanting if you really analyze and delve into it. Music is a very very beautiful world and I would say that all of us are blessed to be a part of it. You may be a performer, a learner, a rasika. Nevertheless you would have seen that when you listen to music it can offer you different dimensions, different colors and really enrich and enchant your life. Music, if I say, it actually encompasses different genres and kinds of music like classical music, popular music, devotional music, folk music and so on. And it is also understood that each one may like to listen to a different kind of music. For example, I would like to listen to Carnatic music, may love to listen to devotional music, that is bhajanas and other such devotional pieces. A youngster may like to listen to more of film music, but nevertheless the fact remains that all of us do like listening to music and I am sure there would be hardly anybody who would say, oh I hate listening to music, that really doesn't happen. Coming to the different categories of music, I would like to refer to one of the most renowned scholar musician and ethnomusicologist Ashok Ranade who has said that the music world over can be categorized basically under four headings that is tribal music, folk music, art music and popular music. I would like to quickly add in the Indian context the aspect of devotional music also to this category and I'll explain all this later. You may immediately jump at me and say, is not Carnatic music devotional? 
then why do you put it under a different category as art music or classical music? For this also, we will find answers later. Coming back to the four categories again, as I said to you, a film music or a Carnatic music or a Hindustan music or whatever it be, these would fall under these categories only. The aesthetics of listening to music, this is a subject which is really remarkable. Here I would like to first compare music with the art of drawing and painting. Now what is the similarity between painting and music? In drawing and painting we see that we have the seven basic colors and we use them, their shades and combinations to create a variety of pictures. Similarly in music we have the seven basic notes and with their combinations and shades we create innumerable melodies. Now again it's very beautiful to observe that for a painting we may use a canvas as the medium for drawing or the painting. For music where is the canvas? The canvas is nothing but the silence. So in the beautiful canvas of silence the artist uses the seven notes as the seven colors and paints beautiful oral pictures. Now coming to the difference between painting and music in terms of the aesthetic experience, I would like to share with you my own personal observation. When somebody paints a picture, he does it in solitude by himself. He may paint the picture and then after that he keeps it for our viewing. An individual may get to view it or it may be put in an art gallery for viewing. So where you would see that the artist completes the picture and then he puts it for our aesthetic enjoyment. But this cannot be applied to music where the aesthetic experience is totally different. You cannot say that when you are listening to music, let the artist finish singing and then I will enjoy the music. It doesn't happen that way in music. Here you have to be a part of that experience. You have to be part of every phrase that the artist is singing. You have to immerse yourself through every note, every tone in order to get that best aesthetic experience. So what I want to emphasize here is that you have to travel along with the musician throughout the listening process in order to derive that beautiful aesthetic experience. And here you would also understand that any kind of distractions really robs us of that real aesthetic experience. For example, when you are sitting in a concert and just fiddling with your mobile, looking at messages or if you are trying to converse with your friend who is sitting next to you, then what happens is that you are disconnected with the artist at certain points and that way there is a diminishing aesthetic experience. So in a nutshell what I would like to say is that when you go to a concert you should be mentally prepared to engross yourself in that whole musical experience. It may be for two hours, two and a half hours. But then you have to surrender yourself at the altar of music. You have to surrender yourself to every note and tone in order to be able to derive the best aesthetic experience. Here again I would like to compare music also with dance and drama to show you how the aesthetic experience is different. In music you, it's a very very unique medium I would say where in sometimes in a congregational singing you can also sing along. For example, you may know music or you may not know music but when somebody sings a Nama Vali, you are able to join in and sing along. You may not have been initiated into music at all but then you are able to join in that process of singing. But this is not possible in drama or dance. Again when it comes to drama, we see that though it is a story or a theme that is presented to us, it is the individuals who together make up a whole theme or story. So there you would see that the, there is no possibility of 10 people as you would see in a singing together. That cannot happen in a drama but then the 10 people come together to give you a holistic story or something like that. 
again if you compare with dance unless you are really initiated into dance if somebody does a step and you are asked to immediately reproduce it is not possible but then the music is a beautiful medium where you see that whether you know music or not at many points of time when people are singing in the bhajana sampradayam you would see that people going on the road singing the namavalis and other things you just go into that spiritual atmosphere and you become a part of it and then you yourself join in to the singing process so music has got different dimensions that way which is not seen in other mediums of fine arts something very very unique to music something very very peculiar to music now coming specifically to carnatic music i would say that it is a perfect balance of science and art in the sense that there is a strong theory underlying the system and at the same time the practical aspects have blossomed in unmeasurable heights as you would have seen from the presentation by various artists over so many years carnatic music is very very interesting also from the point that there are different layers of music and different ways of enjoying the music also why do i say that first of all let us take the lay rasika who has very minimal knowledge about carnatic music to him this music becomes a source of entertainment peace and happiness thus when he listens to music he feels a sense of joy and happiness he may not know that the artist is singing todi or bhairavi he may not know whether it's a tyagaraja kriti or a shama sastri kriti but the whole point is that the holistic experience of attending a concert is what gives him that satisfaction so the internal parts may not matter much to him but he is very very happy that he has attended the concert and like this we see many rasikas coming to sabhas the second kind of rasika that i have seen are the informed rasikas who have some knowledge about our music in terms of for example they may be able to identify the raga of a composition they may be able to identify the composer they may be able to understand some of the nuances in terms of the arohana avarana of some common ragas etc for them the concert then becomes an enrichment and enlightenment in the sense that after attending the concert they feel that they have achieved something they are taking back something home in terms of musical knowledge to a serious student who has learned carnatic music for many years this system of music the concert experience may be a beautiful intellectual exercise so for him it is beyond being just an entertainment or being just devotional why do i say this because carnatic music has so much to offer to the intellect also if you look at for example the raga alapana the kalpana swaras or if you look at the different intricate patterns of the mridangam that is being played if you analyze all this you will see that there is a lot of intellectual aspects involved in each aspect of this carnatic music so that is one way in which you can look at the music itself then to a spiritually inclined person music becomes a devotional and spiritual journey you would have seen some rasikas sitting with their eyes closed and just getting immersed in the music for example if i sing ka va va kanda va va yani ka va vela va immediately they would be visualizing muruga in front of them or if i sing श्रीनिवास तिरवेकट बुडय जय गो तिलद मुकुंद आनंद श्रीनिवास तिरवेकट मुडय योर थॉट मे जस्ट फ्लाई टू तिरुपति इमेजिनिंग पेरुमाल so that is also one way of enjoying music where when i'm singing about the various deities you try to relate to the deity and you try to derive some kind of a devotional bliss from the concert and then there are also some to whom the music may be 
just some kind of a soothing lullaby. This why I am saying is because of the fact that we as organizers get to meet so many kinds of people and uh, the Palam radio which my husband Mr. Mudra Baskar has devised and it's been so effectively being heard by people all over the globe. Well, one lady came to us and said that at night it's very very difficult for me to get sleep now since I'm aging. Now if I'm going to put on the television and, and try to view some serial or some movie, it's going to be a great disturbance to the other members of the family. Whereas if I log on to your Palam radio and uh, put it through my earphone and listen maybe for half an hour, I feel that I've got a lot of solace through the music and finally my disturbed mind gets calm and I'm able to sleep well. So there, Carnatic music also plays the role of being a beautiful, soothing element to some rasikas. Now we finally also, it's interesting to observe how Carnatic music has become a habit with many people like taking a cup of good filter coffee in the morning like that, especially for the Mailapur rasikas, attending a concert in the evening is a habit without which they cannot live and uh, listening to the concert and going back home and getting a peaceful sleep is something which is a habit with many many people especially in the Mailapur area and that's why we would also see if you go to important sabhas in Mailapur the same set of rasikas they keep coming every day not that they do not know much of music not that they have not heard much in fact some of them have heard the senior kind of rasikas who are 70, 80 plus would have listened to almost all the top stalwarts in the field. Yet they keep coming back to the halls to listen to concerts because that gives him a very, very unique kind of a happiness, a unique kind of experience which no YouTube or no other kind of uh, gadgets can provide. So that's where I always insist that a uh, live concert has got a beautiful experience, aesthetic experience for the rasika, where you are able to connect directly to the performer. This is something which has to be only experienced in order to be understood. Any amount of talking will not make you understand. I request you to just go back next time to a concert hall and just sit there and see how you are able to create a beautiful connect with the main performer. Here again, I would like to make a mention about the connect aspect that the connection is a very very subtle kind of a connection where even your eye contact can convey so many things to the artist. Unlike western music or other kinds of jazz music or any other music you know where you express your appreciation by shouting aloud or clapping hard or you know jumping and other things. Here in Carnatic music we have very beautiful ways of expressing our appreciation. At the most somebody may say aha but then a clap may also be a way of showing appreciation but all this we do not in between the performance but after a piece is over. So there are many many ways in which we can express our appreciation and when the artist is able to understand directly that you are appreciating his music, his creativity knows no bounds and he starts exploring music further. Thus, you may be a lay rasika, you may be a well informed rasika, you may be a student of music, you may just be a spiritual person and uh, you may just be another rasika who comes to a concert by habit. Nevertheless, we see that Carnatic music has something to offer to every rasika who tries to listen to it intently. I would like to say that Carnatic music has so much to offer to us and in this context make a mention that we get what we seek. So it is up to us to discover and delve deep into it in order to get the best out of it. Here I would like to quickly add that in this series, I am going to be particular about sharing what Resikas would like to know and not what I know. It makes a lot of difference, isn't it? Because if I am going to share whatever I feel that I should be sharing with you, then that my, my purpose is not going to be served at all because the ultimate aim is to enrich rasikas and to make them think about the Carnatic music system in a deeper manner. And that's where I think your participation is also very, very important. 
I also appeal to our viewers and Rasikas to ask me any questions pertaining to the subject. I would only be too happy to answer you because it also enriches me because I get to think about music in very many ways in which I have not thought about earlier. In the next series, I look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. Oh.